Howdy, y'all. Welcome back to part three on St. Louis, Missouri. More specifically, on the World's Fair of 1904, also known as the Louisiana Expo. Now, initially, I had made this third part of the video continuously with part two. However, after reviewing that, it got really intense. I was really pushing some of the ideas and some of the concepts found in this narrative that I found to be highly questionable. And I wanted to sort of re-record this narrative. I want to present these ideas with you, but I'm going to be a bit more brief on what the narrative says, because I'm going to allow you to make your own opinions about what we're told about all of this construction. So let me get right into it. And just for reference, we're going to be looking at probably the remaining 125 to 150 old world photographs taken in 1904 depicting all the different aspects and architecture and amazing nature of this world's fair so as written in the current narrative there were over 1500 buildings that were built in the roughly three-year period leading up to this world's fair in 1904 basically these were said to all be constructed simultaneously now we're told there was a grand architect named George Kessler, and initially, I couldn't believe that he actually oversaw every single one of these buildings, yet in the narrative, we're told that he actually masterminded the entire plan of this World's Fair, and he's given credit for that. Now, I tried to look into George Kessler, and he has a bit of a history, but it seems to all stem from this 1904 World's Fair. Now, looking into it deeper, I found some really interesting information. While George Kessler is referred to as this mastermind, we have a much more famous at the time architect by the name of Frederick Law Olmsted. Now, I've actually mentioned Frederick Law Olmsted in other videos just by chance um, about architecture. Now, apparently there is an urban legend or a myth that says that Olmsted was actually responsible for designing the 1904 World's Fair. And this is when it gets really interesting. If you look into this history, it's written that this George Kessler, who is actually given credit in the narrative, worked as a gardener for Frederick Law Olmsted for a large portion of his life. And just by chance, Frederick Law Olmsted is actually credited with designing many buildings and repurposing many buildings in the St. Louis area, including the Botanical Gardens. So it's really interesting that Frederick Law Olmsted was working in the vicinity of the World's Fair. However, he is not given the credit, and it's actually considered to be an ancient or old world myth that Frederick Law Olmsted designed this World's Fair. Now, what makes it even more of a myth or an urban legend is that the fair was originally scheduled to open in 1903, which would mark 100 years since the Louisiana Purchase. However, for quote unknown reasons, the fair was pushed back by one year and it opened in 1904. Now, what makes that interesting is that Frederick Law Olmsted actually passed away in 1903. So at the same time that he passed away, the entire fair was pushed back. Now, they're saying Frederick Law Olmsted had nothing to do with the fair. However, his former gardener, George Kessler, is actually considered to be the master architect behind the whole thing. Is that at all suspect to you? Does it make sense that every building, road, statue, lantern, all of these things popped up in this short 36-month period? Or would it make more sense that Frederick Law Olmsted, a seasoned architect, would actually have been working in this area possibly before the time period that we are given. I just find it really interesting that within this narrative, all the clues point to Frederick Olmsted having a major part to play in the construction or repurposing of these buildings. However, the narrative says with 100% authority that Frederick Olmsted had nothing to do with this construction and that it was 100% George Kessler. So just really interesting facts right there. Now, we also have a handful of 
technological advancements that are said to have been displayed at this world's fair and what i found really interesting about this is it's the same technological advancements that we see at world's fairs for decades previous to this one we see many of the same things that popped up in paris and then in buffalo and now they're popping up again at this world's fair almost like when they were first displayed even though the entire world apparently went to these old world's fairs the ones before 1904 we're still told and it's still treated as if many of the occupants and the uh, people in society had never seen these things before so let me just list some of these for you and then we'll discuss it very briefly so i'm gonna list these main achievements that are basically what we are told was displayed at the 1904 world's fair and then if you're familiar with my videos or the old world in general you can kind of decipher that all of these things have been mentioned in other videos and in old world cities from the 1800s so a lot of this stuff is kind of dated for its time yet it's being displayed as brand new technology now we have the fax machine the personal automobile the infant incubator we also have the electric streetcar which is on display and that's one that i found really interesting because even in the 1890s in my hometown, which is Lancaster, Pennsylvania, we had an electric streetcar. So for it to be on display in this major city of St. Louis, which was said to be the fourth largest city in the United States at the time, and basically being put on display as this brand new technology, when really it was being used around the United States for decades previous to this, I just found that really interesting. Now, we also have mention of other technologies that were in use at this World's Fair, including one of those being the X-ray machine. And I mentioned in part two of this video about McKinley and his assassination at the 1901 World's Fair. And interestingly, we still are not using the X-ray machine roughly three years later at the 1904 World's Fair, or it's still a new technology that hasn't been employed. We also see the infant incubator on display at the 1904 World's Fair. And this is something that we've been questioning since we saw it in the 1800s in the World's Fairs in Europe. Just very interesting stuff. Now, we also have a handful of different uh, balloons and dirigibles that I showcased in some of the photographs. And those are really interesting. We also have the first designs of the airplane said to be put on display at this World's Fair. Now, these are all really big achievements. I will give them that. I just find it interesting that we're having the same achievements on display for 10, 20 years throughout time, throughout the entire world. Now, something that always didn't quite match up for me when looking at these old world narratives and specifically looking at the world's fairs is how we have these massive buildings that are built in the old world style or they're built to look like they could be hundreds of years old, yet they are put on display to showcase the newest of technologies. And this whole fair itself, like I mentioned before, is one big contest. So these are supposed to be on the cutting edge and the forefront of technology and of architecture. So it makes me wonder, at least a little bit, why they would be building nearly every single one of these structures in the old world style when the whole concept behind a world's fair is to showcase what is coming next. It's just really interesting to me. There's a dichotomy there that I think we should dive into a little bit. Now, I mentioned in the previous two videos about St. Louis, how St. Louis was known as the city of mounds. By the year of 1904 and all of this construction that was done on the World's Fair, we can notice that basically all of the ancient mounds and earthworks are no longer there. Whether they have been built on top of or rather incorporated into some of these designs, we may never know. But what we do have in the narrative is that after this time period, really only one major mound in St. Louis existed, and that is Sugarloaf Mound, which still exists today. But for the majority of the ancient earthworks at this time, they were basically covered up or built over for this 1904 expo. Now, that leads me to an interesting question I want to pose, especially when looking at the massive buildings like this. Imagine building one of these buildings today in an area close to you. 
Imagine bringing in 10 workers. Imagine bringing in 50 workers. Imagine bringing in 100 workers. Now, how long do you believe current modern day construction workers and a head mason, so to speak, would take to build a structure like this? Because overall, we're told 1,500 buildings of this nature were built in a roughly 36 month time period. Now, I've mentioned previously at what rate that would put these buildings at, but it comes out to roughly over 40 every single month. Now, I'm not saying that each one was built in simply a month's time, but to accumulate all of these buildings all at once rising up and being constructed is almost miraculous to imagine. Now, do you think a modern day team could construct a building like this in let's say one month? Now, at the same time, do you think they could work with many other different teams to build an overarching World's Fair that appears like the one we see in all of these photographs? Do you think it could be possible? That's the only question I want to pose. I'm not saying I do or do not think it's possible. I just want you to imagine in the area you are right now, do you think with the construction workers and everything, the materials of your area, that this could be done? I just think it's really fascinating. And I want to pose those questions while looking at these remaining photographs of the 1904 World's Fair. These are going to be the most unique and high definition, the most amazing photographs that I could discover in all of my research. These will mostly be museum kept or from private collections. They'll be high quality and I believe a definitive collection of the 1904 World's Fair. Now, obviously I could not find a photograph of every single of the 1500 plus buildings, but I do believe that I've been able to display in these photographs the World's Fair in most of its glory. Now, I don't plan to really chime back in, but maybe once or twice occasionally to point out interesting details and aspects that I see here. But for the most part, these photographs really speak for themselves. They tell their own story, especially when we consider the somewhat out there narrative that we've been presented with in the construction of every single one of these buildings. While we could choose to dive into the current narrative and try and dissect that, I think a lot of these photographs really speak for themselves. I know I said that multiple times, but I believe there is a lot in these images that is hidden in plain sight. I believe that the creators or the builders or the masons that were behind many of these designs knew that years later we would be viewing these photographs and reviewing these images and reviewing the narrative. And I think there is a lot here to decode. Now, I'm not going to tell you what to think, but I am going to share the most unique images with you. Things like this building called Creation, and there's also a building called The Flood, The Deluge, and things like that, that explain our human nature in general. And I just think it's really remarkable. I think it was something done by the powers that be to sort of leave these clues, these Easter eggs, to look into the old world even further. Now, there is another building that I want to discuss.
I briefly showed this building, if you want to call it that, in the beginning of part two on St. Louis. However, I'd just like to point this out a bit to you. Now, I'm not very familiar with the St. Louis area or the park, especially prior to 1904. However, I did find this building to be simply remarkable. We have this castle-like structure with the Antiquatec on the top, everything we see in old world buildings. Now, we are told this is one of the 1500 plus buildings that were constructed for the 1904 World's Fair. However, I'm more interested in the mountain range or the hill that is behind and built into this building. Now, I'm not sure if this hill is man-made or if this could possibly be one of the ancient mounds, one of the ancient Native American earthworks that is being built on top of to construct this building. We're gonna look at it from a couple different angles, but I just found it fascinating to me because we have these rock formations that are appearing behind this building, and I don't know if that is real rock or if it is some sort of faux rock or if it is possibly dirt that is just covered or painted to look that way. Um, but what I found interesting is the caverns that appear to be dug into this rock face and into this mountainside and the same way the building also appears to be built into this mound or jutting out of this mound and it's absolutely massive absolutely old world in style and we're told this was actually a restaurant of all things at the world's fair so just really remarkable to see a building like this and to wonder how this was built in 36 months let alone one of 1500 buildings built in 36 months So for the remainder of this video, I'm just going to chime out and allow you to view these images. I am not going to dive back into the narrative too much. I'd rather just allow you to point out to me what stands out to you in these images. Anything interesting or any anomalies that you see, I would love to hear about in the comments down below. St. Louis was completely reshaped after this World's Fair in 1904. In previous videos on St. Louis, I mentioned to you how there was a cyclone or tornado in 1896 which destroyed major parts of the city. Well, we have this huge rebuild and it is incorporating the World's Fair of 1904. Interestingly, a lot of these buildings as we've discussed are not permanent or are not meant to last, yet we do have a lot of money and funds coming into the city from this World's Fair. So, for the remainder of this video, I just want to showcase some of the more unique and interesting things I saw in these images. I want to point out some of the more interesting buildings that don't really have any history written about them, but the architecture and the artwork on the outside is absolutely fascinating. I'm also going to show you a few images of the interiors of some of these buildings, just to show you how massive they are and just how finished they were on the inside. Some of them appear like royal castles, completely furnished on the inside. And it's just remarkable to understand that 1,500 of these buildings stood in St. Louis, and they were all constructed in a 36-month period. At least that's what we are led to believe. So let's view these images. Let me know what you see down below, and we will break this narrative apart in the comments. I'd love to hear from you, and I thank you so much for being here.